Force only. Let's go. Hello everyone, today I'll be attempting to explain Timon's incredible yet possible three mid fours in a row from his Monkey League semifinal match versus Felix Zemdegs. These solves include some great multi-slotting, some pseudo-slotting, overall great F2L technique, look ahead, and planning and inspection. Wow. We're going to start with yellow cross on this first scramble, noticing that all four pairs are on opposite centers, relatively solved, and we've got this massive yellow and orange block, which we'll make use of for the double X cross. So first, and keep in mind, most of these moves were planned during inspection, but I'll do the moves on the cube to make it easier to follow. We're going to do these first two cross pieces in the back, and then set up this green, orange, and green, red pseudo pair. So these two edges, and notice that we're solving this edge while we insert all of these while preserving this block. And we're setting up these two opposite from each other. And so we need to get the green red spot under the orange green edge. Now we can insert these into the back, a very nice pseudo pair. And now you can see that we've solved these two edges and these two corners. And here, conveniently, he didn't see this in inspection, but he's got a nice multi-slot to do here. With this solved corner and this edge, he can insert the edge while pairing up this pair, like this. And of course here he could have cancelled into the OLL, but he was turning very quickly and trying to use as little brain power as possible. So he just does OLL and PLL. For this next solve, he does white cross, noticing that these two cross pieces are already solved. This orange-blue pair is pre-built, and these two edges are very close. So he's actually going to inspect a triple X cross here with a very nice uh, pseudo pair setup. So first, doing the simplest solution to these edges and inserting this corner and edge combo on the left. And now he saw this in inspection, but again, making it easier to follow, you can see that we have a green, red, and red, blue pseudo pair here uh, because we've got this edge. And inserting this pair here would give us an unfavorable situation for this corner, and inserting this pair wouldn't really help anything. So in fact, the optimal solution that Timon does here is very nice, setting up to a pseudo pair. So first solving this corner, which kind of goes with this edge and leaving space open for this pseudo pair, which can then be quickly solved like this. Next, he's going to set up these two, and here he notices this OLS case. He sometimes does this just to force edges, but in this case, it actually just skips OLL entirely and PLL. Fours only. Let's go. For this third and final solve, Timon plans all four pairs in inspection, making use of this corner and edge being solved after cross, as well as this corner, and setting up this edge along with this pseudo pair and this fourth pair here. Now this may be hard to follow, but again, I'll do the moves on the cube uh, so that you can see what he planned. So first, he's going to want to set up a uh, the cross, and while solving the cross, he's going to want to optimize the continuation. So what he does here is first solve this one, which pairs up these two. And now keep these in the back of your mind because we will be making the use of them soon. Notice how this corner and this edge belong right here with this edge, uh, which is a D away. Also notice that this edge is here, so while solving the rest of the cross, he's going to set up this edge to be inserted into the back. And notice that while he solves this edge and these cross pieces, preserving this corner, he's not messing up this block and he paired up these two. So now when he inserts the edge, while not messing anything up and bringing out this pseudo pair, fortunately at this point, 
when solving this pseudo pair, he's actually going to set up this final fourth pair. So notice that the green red edge and the orange green corner are going together in this case because of the misalignment on the D layer. And when he solves this, a wide D move or wide U move, and he's set up the final pair. Now this OLL, he pretty much never does the actual OLL algorithm. He almost always sets it up to ZBLL because EO is so much faster. And in this case, he does it. And setting up to a nice ZB, which is just an anti soon into that OLL. So these solves, quite impressive. And uh, hopefully we'll see more of these to come. Okay, let's talk about this starting grip. This is pretty good, pretty yep. standard. You'd usually like to start off with uh, an R wide move in this kind of situation. Yeah, I think the grip just went perfectly. You can see my thumb. I place it and it just stays in place for the rest of the cross, which is really good. Yeah, that's your, uh, your right thumb. Correct. Yep. Yeah, just super fluid. Here, this is a pretty nice transition. Oh, yeah. I think this has been the main thing that I improved recently, which is just learning to place my hands and then, like, placing them once and then not moving them until I need to again. Yeah, and this, 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 uh, this execution is not the easiest. I mean, a lot of wide moves going on. Mm -hmm. Pseudo pair is kind of hard to find your grip. Like, are you just focusing? Yeah, on Yeah, I, I think the main thing I've learned with this is that when you have a solution like this, you need to like take your time and place your hands properly instead of like half-assing it and then having to struggle for the rest of the solve. So in this solve, you're mainly just focusing on that right thumb and every other finger is just trying to hold things stable while you do the moves. Yeah. Okay, let's go into the next solve. So the second solve here, it's a bit fumbly to start. Yeah, it seems like at the start of the solve, after the first F move, I didn't approximate the position of the cube well, and I just moved my whole grip over to the right of the cube. So there's a little much. slide here. Yeah. That results in an imprecise. Well, move. I think that slide was actually saving the solve because it, it like my thumb was. I moved it back to the correct position. During this. Yep. And here it looks like you're you're clutching the cube, trying to make sure it doesn't fall out yeah, of your hands. Yeah, I'm barely gripping it. And this OLS you have down, you've done this a lot. <laughs> yes. It's basically an algorithm for you. Same with this. Well, it is. It's an OLS. Yeah, I'm just telling the viewers to think of it like any of your PLLs. Or, oh, know, yeah. It's, of it's at that level. Yeah, I think in the second half of the solve, the group was a lot better because there was a rotation. So I had an opportunity to like reset completely. Yeah. But going back to the beginning of the solve, I feel like... Is is this just hard to execute? Like, is there anything? You well, you can change? definitely see it's like five gen, so it's not easy because it's you know R U L F D yeah. moves. So what about the starting but, thumb placement? It's uh, kind of low yeah. on the right side. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think that's because it was going into an F move. And then I was going to regroup my hand anyway. Uh, yeah. I believe that's what I did. Yeah. 
So it didn't really matter. Like I just did it, basically set it up for, for perfectly for the F move. But um, yeah, that, then I just placed my left thumb too far on the center and my right thumb too far off the center. Just moved it over a bit. Okay, so this third solve. Now this is the one where you plan the entire F two L. So when you're <laughs> yes. when you're doing that, you are of course also planning the execution during inspection. Yes. Of course. So are you going through multiple variations, like trying to figure out what's gonna work, or are you just using your intuition mostly? Uh mostly intuition, but depending on the solve I'll also like do a calculation. Okay, so starting off here, this is already looking very sketchy. Yeah, it's a bit of a sketchy turn to do at the start of the solve like that, but I guess I made it work. I think I did that because of the F move again. Seems like the F moves dictate a lot of what I do. Yeah. This is straightforward using two hands for any sort of uh, execution and very important. Yeah, well, here comes the tricky part. I need to do a U wide move, right? Yeah, and I use my left middle finger for that U wide move, which is, I think, very important and a lot of people don't pay attention to that. Like I've seen Max Park do a lot of U wide moves with his index fingers and it's just a lot slower because it requires a lot more movement. Yeah, so it's more travel, takes longer to regrip. Yeah, because your middle finger is already on that layer most of the time, so it's it's basically perfect for that move. Yeah. And then at this point, just immediately, last layer, and this is again, just algorithmic. Yeah. You've practiced this a million times. So going back to the beginning of the solve, I think it's it's really interesting to analyze the execution of those first few moves. Yeah, the first like said, three. The, the, the F moves, like this this was really awkward. And, and usually... Some I of think it, it, it looks are... awkward because you think I did a U-turn with my right hand. But if you look closely at my left index finger, that's the finger doing the turn. Huh, so you're pushing on the top that Ah uh, yes. Well it's just a push turn. Like yeah, it's a normal, but because my right hand is on top of the cube, it looks completely different. Yeah, and that right hand on top is for the next F move there. Yes. And then it also flowed very nicely with the rest of the cross. And what do you think this uh, slight lock up here is caused by? Well, I think it, it might be me trying to like figure out my hand placement for the U wide move, the U wide prime. Uh, because I mean, even though your index or your middle finger is already placed correctly, you still need to regroup your other hand so that your thumb isn't in the way. Right. So. At this point, you already know the moves, of course, but you're like, yeah, you're distracting yourself with some planning for your placement, and that's like messing up your execution. Is that what's? Yeah, going I, on? I mean, I think you can see uh, if you look at the second to last move of the insertion, you can see I slide my thumb off the cube. I think I was trying to put it on the bottom corner, like the orange, green, yellow corner because that's where it needs to be for the u wide move, but it just slid too far. I see. So what you wanted to do is is lock onto that green sticker and just drag yes. it down. Exactly. And then it goes above, and so then, ah, so then you throw your thumb yeah. up and then catch it. So I guess that's the stuff to work on. Uh, <laughs> some minor, <laughs> yeah. minor issues. <laughs> Yeah, some great yeah, solves. Yeah, I mean, at this, yeah, with this DPS, any sort of mistake 
in finger placement or it'll just completely kill yourself. Yeah. Well, thanks for uh, going through these with me and I hope I uh, hope it was educational for the fans. Uh, one, one quick uh, side note. You're, uh, you're often seen you using this towel here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I know you've also talked about your soap. Uh, what effect does this have on, on your turning? Like, what are you trying to do here? Well, you're trying to get any excess moisture off of your hands because that will make your hands stick. If you have like any sweat or water or like residue on your hands. And I don't know for me, I used to actually like that when my hands stuck to the cube more. But then as I got better, I liked it less and less. And at this point, I can't really solve when my hands are like that. So yeah, I'm just trying to get my hands to a place where I can grip the cube properly. But it's also like easy to slide my fingers on the cube. Oh, thank you. And uh, thank you. we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.